Let's get started with reference linking webinar. I'm Patricia Feeney. I'm in charge of product support at Crossref. Um, just some housekeeping things to mention. The phones are muted. Uh, we are going to send out the slides and a link to the webinar recording shortly after we finished. Um, if you have any questions, there's a questions panel in the, um, to, on the right side of your screen. You can feel free to submit your questions as we go through the webinar and I will try to answer them as we go along and probably play some catch up at the end. Okay. So when you become a Crossref member, you're part of a community of publishers that have committed to share metadata and provide persistent links. We don't just provide a service, we build infrastructure as a community. Um, and your efforts are a large part of what we've created. Um, we have some obligations that our publisher members must comply with. One of the, I think, most important ones is reference linking. So it's Valentine's Day and we love our members, so it's a great opportunity to talk about you strengthening your relationship with Crossref by fulfilling one of your most important member obligations. Um, so reference linking means that you include DOI links in the references for your content. When you become a Crossref member, um, you, your obligation is to provide these links within your current journal content, but we encourage you to link references for all of your content, including back journal content and any book content you may have. But you're only really required to include reference links for current journal content. Um, and you commit to linking out from your references within 18 months of becoming a member. So your primary connection to the Crossref community is through building these links. You link out to members and they in turn link to your content. When you create these links, you're helping to strengthen scholarly infrastructure. There are other benefits as well. Uh, links from other members drive traffic to your content. And you're really now expected to provide links in your references um, if you have online content. And linking with persistent identifiers like Crossref registered DOIs provides persistence. You don't need to maintain your links once you add them to your content. They're there and they will work forever. Um, you also don't have to work out agreements with other publishers for reciprocal linking. So what exactly is involved in reference linking? We encourage you to use persistent identifiers as links wherever possible in your tables of contents, new publication alerts, metadata feeds, and of course in your reference links. Wherever you display DOIs, you must comply with our DOI display guidelines. We've recently issued some new guidelines. So if you're a new member, you've really joined at a good time because you don't have to change anything you've done in the past. Um, you can just start fresh with our new guidelines. Uh, so uh, the main point you need to take from our display guidelines is that a DOI should always be displayed as a URL and the URL should use the form https colon slash slash doi.org slash the DOI. Um, as I mentioned, this is a new recommendation. So you may see DOIs represented differently until everyone moves over to our new um, guide to um, meet our new guidelines. In the past, we recommended the prefix dx.doi.org, but the dx isn't really necessary, so we've done away with that to shorten the URL. Um, we do recommend that DOI links um, be HTTPS now. Um, in the very distant past, DOIs were represented as DOI colon, but we've moved away from that. Persistent linking is an important part of the function of a DOI, so it's vital that everyone who sees a DOI knows that it's a link and that they can use it as a link. Um, there's a link to the full DOI display guidelines uh, on this slide, and you can also find them on our website. Um, so some examples of what a reference will look like with a DOI link. Um, you can display the DOI as a full URL, as in the first example. Um, and we, we do realize that DOI strings can be very long, and sometimes your screen real estate is sparse, especially if you're um, producing PDFs. So you have the option to create a link behind the text crossref, as in the second example. So that, you know, you click on that word crossref and that is a DOI link and will take you to the appropriate resource. So 
obviously, to implement reference linking, you need to look up DOI matches for your citations. We have a few methods available for you to do that. I'll go through them in the order of complexity. Um, the obvious easiest answer for those of you with a budget is, with a decent budget, is to get someone else to do it. <laughs> this is a little obvious, but um, it's worth mentioning. Um, re since reference linking is a Crossref member obligation, it's fairly commonplace. So most fem vendors who work with Crossref metadata are familiar with this requirement and are able to work with that aspect as well as your initial content registration. Um, you can also have your authors include DOIs in their manuscripts. We do have members that require this. Um, we have got a public interface for looking up DOIs that I'm going to uh, touch on in a, in a second. Um, many authors already cite using DOIs when compiling reference lists or using reference managers anyway, so requiring them and specifying that they uh, record them as a link um, can save you some work if you're able to do that. We currently have one interface that's used heavily for reference linking um, among our um, newer members. It's currently called the Simple Text Query Form. Um, we are probably going to rethink that name, so stay tuned. Um, this is the primary user interface for populating reference lists with DOIs. Um, honestly, it's, it's been around for a few years, and it's, it's a little clunky, but it does get the job done. Um, we'll walk through how to get your matches. So the first step, if you are new to the form, you need to register an email address for usage. We do this because we need to track usage, and it's unfortunately not hooked up to our overall system yet, so you can't use the same login you use to deposit DOIs. Um, this form is used primarily um, by authors and end users, but many publishers also use it to help with reference linking. Um, this form does have some usage restrictions. Breaking a citation up into parts for querying purposes is, is fairly complex, and we license a reference party parser from a third party. Um, we use the XStyles reference parser. Um, it works well, but it does cost us a fair bit of money, so we're not able to provide unlimited usage. We restrict, we restrict usage to 5,000 matches per month. We found that this limit works for most members who need to use the manual entry form. Um, if you're exceeding that, you may need to use a different workflow or you can always con contact us and we can give you some advice. So to use this form, you, you've registered your email address, you enter that into the appropriate box, um, you cut and paste your reference list into the form and select submit. And fairly quickly, you'll get your reference list back with the DOI links included which you can then cut and paste back into your manuscripts. I, I did mention that this is a bit of a clunky form. Note that not all items have DOIs, so not all references will be, be matched, but it does a pretty good job of finding all available matches. We also have an upload option that's based on this form. It follows the same basic premise, but instead of cutting and pasting, you can upload a text file of references and have the matches emailed to you as an HTML file. Um, this, you do need to submit the list of references as a text file and not a Word file. Um, and we also limit usage for that option. We also have a search interface that you can use to do a more free text search. Um, it's handy for a number of things, but if you use it to identify DOI matches for citations, it doesn't return only the one true match like our XML API or simple text query do. Um, you have to make sure the match you find is the perfect match and not just the closest match. So it's not really appropriate for um, just this kind of grab and go reference matching, but it, it does, you might want to integrate it into your workflow if you're doing some quality control and want to check on the references that you found. We also have an XML API. Um, this is what most members use to match um, DOIs to citations. It supports XML formatted querying. XML queries give you significant tr control over the DOI matching process. The XML API is designed to typically return only one DOI, the one that best fits the metadata you've supplied in the query, 
and then it's suitable for automated matching. You can trust the results. Query results are returned in XML and will contain a full or abbreviated metadata record for matched items depending on what you've requested. The most precise XML query requires you to mark up each citation following, following the rules established in our deposit schema. In this example that I have up on the screen, you can see that the basic citation metadata is split into separate elements. Um, you know, there's a journal title, author, volume, issue, first page, year. This is a well-formatted citation query. Each citation has a query key that you can use to match the result up to the corresponding reference. The query key usually corresponds to your reference norm numbering format, but you can really do whatever you want. Um, you can also refine your query by requesting fuzzy matching on an author name or journal title, or you can ask our query engine to do an author and article title query if a full metadata query doesn't find a match. You can also submit a separate author and article title query. Um, author and article title queries aren't as accurate as full metadata queries, as it's not uncommon for an article to be published in multiple journals or as book chapters, but it's an option, especially if you're dealing with this sort of references um, that work with that kind of query. You can also submit an unstructured citation, meaning um, just a formatted reference surrounded by an unstructured citation tag. Um, as with the simple text query form, we do need to break this reference up into parts that are so that our query engine can find a match, um, which again is complex. Um, a well-formatted journal article is easy for us to manage. Books and other content types are less easy, but we do our best with that. Um, the unstructured citation query option is subject to the same limits as a simple text query form as far as um, the number of um, matches will be able to find you for you on a monthly basis. Um, as far as submitting your queries, you can upload or post queries in bulk to our system. I've got a link to our um, technical documentation on submitting queries in the slide. Um, if you do upload your queries as an XML file, we add that file to our queue and process them asynchronously so you don't get an answer right away. You have to wait till um, your file is processed by our system. Um, most queries do um, an HTTP get, get, so you request your um, results using, a, using an XML query, as in this example. So this is just an example of the results of an XML query. It has the DOI that's been identified as a match, um, which is really all you'll need for reference linking, and it also contains the metadata we have for the DOI. Some other options for um, matching citations to DOIs, um, we have a REST API um, that you can use. You can search, facet, filter, or sample metadata from all of our publisher members, um, and it's updated continuously. Um, it's not usually the best option for automated DOI to citation matching unless you're able to evaluate the results for accuracy. It's used more for bulk downloading of data or filtering on specific information like records with funding data, um, but it's a good option for any special projects you may have. We also have an open URL API. Um, this service is used primarily by libraries, but it can be used to match metadata to DOIs. It's not as effective as XML querying, but it's simple if you're able to break your citations up into parts, so it is a, a good option. So since we're talking about references, um, I do want to mention that we encourage all of our members to deposit references with us. It's, um, reference deposits are part of our Cited By service, and they're required for that service, but um, they aren't required if you don't participate in Cited By, but you can deposit res references nonetheless. Um, if you aren't able to fully participate in our Cited By service, if you deposit references, Cited By participants 
can still identify when you've cited their content and they'll link to your content as a result. So there is some benefit for you from that. Um, you can deposit references using our simple text query form. So if you're using that to query for matches, with a few extra clicks, you can add references to a registered DOI. You can also include references in your XML content registration files, either as part of the initial submissions, or you can add references to a record after it's been registered. Um, I've got a link to the documentation for doing that as well. Um, we allow you to deposit as many unstructured citations as you need to you to um, using XML, we don't um, impose our matching limits on reference deposits. Um, we'll try to find DOI matches for all of them. We have an API you can use to retrieve DOI matches for references you've deposited for a given DOI. You can use these matches for your reference linking. This means that if you do deposit references, you don't need to query separately for DOI matches for your references. You can deposit and either review your logs for matches or use our Get Identifiers API to retrieve our current list of DOI matches for your articles. Um, and that's about it. Um, if you need help with any of this, we have lots of technical documentation on our um, support center at support.crossref.org. We also have a small but capable support staff. Um, we're US-based and give support mostly by email, but we're very happy to answer any questions you may have about including um, DOIs in your references. All right, thank you. I don't see any outstanding questions. If you do have any questions, feel free to follow up by emailing support at crossref.org or visiting our support portal. Thank you.